The flag off of the Mina to Bida Road has rekindled the hope of the smooth and stress-free travel for commuters that have endured years of plying the Porto Reded Road. The Mina to Bida Road reconstruction project spanning 84 kilometers is part of the border infrastructure development agenda in Niger State. We have details in this report. The Mina to Bida Road serves as a crucial link between the north and the southwest regions of Nigeria. However, due to its deteriorating condition, a journey from Mina to Bida that is meant to last for two hours now takes about four hours. This has been the situation for more than a decade. Akmodu Al Hassan, a driver familiar with the rigors of plying this road, tells us his story. <laughs> The previous government awarded a contract to reconstruct the road in the year 2020, but it was abandoned after 5% of work was done. Fast forward four years later, Governor Umaru Bago has recommenced the road reconstruction effort, announcing a full funding for the 84 kilometer stretch through partnership with the Islamic Development Bank and the Abu Dhabi Foundation. Governor Morubago stated that the project marks a significant milestone for Niger State. As of road we have commenced, we had gotten 500 billion Naira funding for those jobs. So to allay your fears, no job is going to stop. And above all, I want to specially thank Mr. President for his magnanimity of granting the tax credit scheme to continue. Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu, represented by the Minister for Information, reaffirmed the government's dedication the to constructing sustainable Nigeria, infrastructure Bola, across the country. The President has always insisted that for Nigeria to grow, there must be a larger cooperation between the federal government and the subnationals. So, what the governor is doing today is an indication that indeed. President Ahmed Bola Chinubu is walking the talk. When the dualization of this road is completed, it will greatly impact on agriculture as this road connects northern Nigeria to the southwestern part of the country. Chenemi Bami, TVC News, Bida. And for more on governance in Niger State, I'm joined by the executive governor. Omar Bago, Your Excellency, thank you for joining us on TV City News at 10. Thank you very much. Good evening. So you mentioned that your government so far has now uh, embarked on the construction of a thousand road projects in the past one year thereabout. Uh, that's huge. But the concern of many is the capacity of the state government to deliver uh, these projects in record time, and how much uh, of debt burden, you know, your administration is now carrying with all of these massive constructions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, we should not cry more than the bereaved. Uh, we met a situation where commuters cannot travel on our roads. Uh, the total number of kilometers of roads were uh, started working on say, 1,000 kilometers of road across the state. Some are federal roads, some are state roads. But as far as we are concerned, we cannot wait for the federal government, looking at the budgetary cycle, to be, come with funding to fix this road. Some of these roads have been there lying fallow for the last 14 or 16 years. Now, as a government, we see that as a priority in the renewed hope agenda and our agri transformation agenda. And the only way we can make agriculture to thrive in Nigeria and Niger State is to make the movement of people and goods very, very easy. Secondly, we are saddled with insecurity. And most of this insecurity is as result of uh, some of these bad spots. So once you have smooth uh, people driving on a smooth road, we think it's very, very okay. And the issue of debt, we cannot uh, spend people, we spend money. 
you know, uh, and as a government, it's our responsibility to look for funding. And, you know, uh, you should understand that my background is from, is from the financial sector. I understand very well what it means, and I know what is my debt ratio. And even, uh, for example, this big da, uh, I mean, uh, dualization of the 84 kilometers road that we have just started, we got the funding from uh, Islamic Development Bank and Abu Dhabi funding. And Niger State has already done its own counterpart funding, and now this is a tripartite agreement. So these funds are already available, so, and the repayment is there. We are tolling them. And most of these roads we are going to do, we are, we are embarking on, we are tolling them. Toll gates, way bridges, we will recoup our money. So there is no cause for alarm. But the most important thing are people first. In addition to that, Mr. Governor, you mentioned recently also that there are plans to construct 100,000 houses, correct me if I'm wrong, to resettle displaced uh, flood victims. Uh, quickly walk us through what the timeline is with this with this project and how you intend to fund it. Okay, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, concerns for our people because of the lower Niger, the lower side of the Niger where year in, year out, uh, people are, you know, are washed with uh, floods. We have four hydropower uh, power dams in Niger State. Anytime they open their gates, we uh, have excessive flood and we lose lives and property. And uh, we have done a census to understand that first, we need to relocate these people to certain places. So 100,000 houses is too, even too small. Because right now we have signed, just day before yesterday, an agreement with the Chinese uh, Railway Corporation to do a train between Abuja and Mina. So we want to depopulate Abuja by uh, an, another 3 million people. Uh, you know, so our intention that in the next 10 years, uh, people will live in Mina and work in Abuja. So 100,000 houses is just uh, the beginning. It shouldn't sound very big, please. Uh, the last time we spoke was in March, and I think it was about your investment in mechanized agriculture. You were quite optimistic about the 50,000 uh, metric tons ambition of the state before June this year. How is that going now? Do you think it's achievable by next month? Very well, very well. Right now, preparations have been con con concluded. We have deployed uh, machineries across Niger State to our different fields. Mind you, we have 24 uh, uh, reserves that we have cleared and prepared for this uh, raining season farming. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything serious in the dry season farming. You know, a lot of bureaucracy between the Prime Minister of Agriculture and the state government really delayed it. But we're not looking that. We're looking beyond that. We, have, we just came back from America. Uh, Ms. Uh, Bayer uh, have signed an agreement with us to crop uh, seeds, you know. And these seeds are very, very high-yield seeds and also uh, 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 drought-resistant and pest-resistant. So the 50,000 metric tons is just the beginning. You know, mind you, again, uh, we have signed an agreement with Lego for 350 billion, you know, uh, naira for rice aggregation. As you are aware, Lagos spends about 2.7 trillion annually for importing of the consumed rice of 2.7 trillion. So uh, Niger State, through its FPV, the Niger Food and Lagos State have signed an agreement, and we have started that. We are fixing our stores. We have some silos we are constructing, and. Uh, uh, in the next one month, you would see the wonders. Um, let's quickly touch on security. You mentioned last year that you're willing to dialogue with bandits. How's that going, uh, particularly when you consider the, the recent attacks recorded in Niger and also the concerns about um, the prison break last month? <laughs> uh, some of the inhabitants in that area, in Solita, want that correctional center relocated. Is that something you're also considering? Um, there's a lot of conversation around the ownership of correctional centers. And I think it is high time uh, these centers are handed over to the states and even privatized. In other countries, government have no business in keeping those uh, kind of centers. And that is why the decay in infrastructure leads to this kind of jail breakout. Uh, that is number one. Secondly, the issue of insecurity. We are dialoguing and we are talking. You know, out of uh, all the local governments in Niger State, very few are still, uh, you know, facing these challenges, but we are still uh, discussing. The non-kinetic approach 
is the way out of this crisis. And mind you, this thing started a long time ago. You know, social injustices. You know, people don't even have potable drinking water. People lose their livelihood and their families. So we need to talk to them, give them hope. You know, uh, we have a plan for them, seven years, ten years plan, you know, to exit from this crisis. But we are sure we are coming out of this by the grace of God. Niger State Governor Umar Bago, thank you for talking to us on the news tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much.